you're keeping well and we are happy that you're able to join us and watch our lessons, our Sunday lessons. My name is Sita Annette and I welcome you to this new month. Turn to your friends and tell them happy new month. Yes, we are in the third month of the year, March. And we thank God for his goodness, for his care, and for his protection. Boys and girls, last month we were learning about prayer. And I hope you have had a prayerful life, you've started a prayerful journey. And may you continue praying, because there's no dustbin for prayer. So this new month, we have yet another topic, a wonderful topic. And we are talking about appreciating God's creation. Repeat that again. Yes, appreciating God's creation. So we have many lessons that we'll be talking about on how we can appreciate God's creation and what is this creation. When you look around you, the animals, the plantations, everything, even the things in your houses, those manufactured gadgets, electronics, they have something that is God's what? Creation. So get ready throughout the lessons with your Bible, your notebook, and your pen. Take lots of, of notes and remember the memory verses for each day as we continue to appreciate God's creation. Enjoy! Praise God! Join us as we sing this beautiful song. Give me joy in my heart. Give me praise. Give me joy in my heart. I pray. I pray. Give me joy in my heart, give me praise. Give me praise till the end of the day. Sing Hosanna, sing Hosanna, sing Hosanna to the King of Kings. Sing Hosanna, sing Hosanna, sing Hosanna to the King of Kings. Give me love in my heart, give me salvation. Give me love in my heart, I pray, I pray. Give me love in my heart, give me salvation. Give me salvation till the end of the day. Sing Hosanna, sing Hosanna, sing Hosanna to the King of Kings. Sing Hosanna, sing Hosanna, sing Hosanna to the King of Kings. Thank you. Praise God. Praise God again, children, boys and girls. Welcome to the first Sunday of March. Um, I hope you've been well. God has taken care of you. He has protected you and got you to this beautiful month of March. So we're going to start with a word of prayer before we get into our session of today. So when we want to pray, we close our eyes, we bow our heads, and then we pray. Almighty God, ever living master, King of Kings, we come before you this morning with thanksgiving in our hearts. Thank you, dear Father, for this Father that you brought us. Thank you, Father, for your good deeds upon our lives. Thank you, Father, for protecting our children, protecting our parents, protecting us and guiding us. Thank you, God, for your beautiful work of creation. As we start this lesson of today, Lord, which is all about the beautiful things that you gave us through creation, I pray the Lord you may use me as your vessel that I may be able to pass this message to the children, oh dear Father, and that you may be able to appreciate what you brought into this world. We give you thanks, we give you glory, and it is in Jesus' mighty name we pray and believe. Amen. Thank you very much, boys and girls. So today... This month, we'll be talking about appreciating God's creation. Yes, appreciating God's creation. And our lesson for, lesson for today is God loves it when we appreciate his creation. And we're going to get our readings from the book of Genesis 1, from verse 1 to 26, all the way to 2, verse 1 to 25, then Genesis 3, verse 8. And probably as we begin, I'll want you to think about what is creation? 
What do you think creation is? Yes? What is creation? Creation is that when you bring something new into existence, right? When you come up with something new. What are some of the things that you've seen that have been created? You've seen a beautiful work of art that has been hung somewhere and you loved it and you marveled at it. That is a creation, somebody's creation. You've seen this very beautiful car that has come up. Yes, that you've never seen before, a different model and everything. That is creation. We brought something new into existence that wasn't there before. So we're going to read from, first of all, we'll discuss the book of Genesis 1 up to 26. And then we're going to go back step by step to the other chapters. So the first book of Genesis it starts with the story of creation, right? The story of creation. We all know about the story of creation. God created uh, day and night on the first day, right? The second day, what did he create? The sky, right? The expanse. Then on the third day, he created the land and the plants. The fourth day, there were the stars and the sun and the moon, right? Then we have the sea and the sea creatures on the fifth day plus the birds. Then on the sixth day, he did a marvelous job of creating human beings and animals. And on the seventh day, he rested. Now, I want us to be specific first on the sixth day. On the sixth day, there is something that God created that was so unique. That was the human being, the you and me, right? And in Genesis 1:26, it says, God said, let there be man in our image, in our likeness, and let them rule over the fish of the sea and birds of the air, over livestock, earth, and all creatures that move on ground. I want you to underline the word God's image, God's likeness. What does that mean? That you are created in God's likeness. Does it mean that God has blood flowing in his veins like us, that he has flesh like us. Like, that, like we look, when you see God there, it's just like a human being. Does it mean that God looks like us? What do you think when you say we are created in God's image? What do you think it means? Yes? If you read the book of John chapter 4 verse 24, it tells us that God is a spirit. Yes? God is spirit and his worshippers should praise him with in spirit and in truth. Are you a spirit? Are you a spirit? We are not spirits, right? We are humans. We, ref we, 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 we present ourselves with flesh and blood. But God is a spirit. However, the aspect of our likeness to God is this, it's in the sense that he created us unique. How did God create us unique? He created us unique because we can think and do things that he expects us to do. The same way he created us, he created animals, he created us and takes care of us. He expects us to take care of what he created. And that is why when we go to, the, to Genesis uh, chapter 2, there is the aspect of when you're told, man was told to multiply and subdue the earth and should be able to take care of all the living and non-living things on earth. So basically, we are caretakers and stewards of creation. When we look at the book of Genesis chapter 2 from verse 1 to 25, it's the story of Adam and Eve. So God created man. There was this man called Adam and he put the, him in a beautiful garden. Yes, remember we said God created, on the third day he created land and plants. So there was this beautiful garden called the garden of eden and he put he put he put adam and he told him you take care of this garden eat from it but do not what touch the the fruit in the middle tree which is the tree of knowledge of good and evil and as god looked at adam he saw hey this man looks very lonely so let me give him a helper so what did he do he got him a helper he caused him to sleep, a deep sleep, removed the rib from, his, uh, from Adam's body and created a woman. And the woman was named Eve. Are we together up to that point? So we are still seeing God's work of creation. God is still working. 
right? He's still working because even after he created man, he thought, hey, there is something that this man is lacking. I love him so much. Let me give him somebody to, to stay with. And you know, you remove your body. For those of us who have people in the house, it's so much fun because we can give stories, we can tell each other things, we can help each other. So God was looking at that aspect of Adam needs a helper. And he gave him Eve. So, as, God's, uh, as, as, as we continue appreciating, Adam, as Adam continued appreciating God's creation of the beautiful land where they are with Eve, the beautiful trees, something happened, right? Something happened. An evil, evil serpent came and told Eve, what did God tell you? That you cannot eat the fruit from the middle of the tree. You know what? He's telling you that so that you don't do what? You don't think like him, do like him, and become better than him. You do this, take it. So what happened? Eve plucked it and beat it and gave it to Adam. What do you think happened thereafter? They started realizing, oh my God. We are naked. Before they didn't know because God had protected them from that. And they started stitching some, very, some fig trees so that they can hide themselves. And as God was walking around, yes, as God was walking around, they hid. Then he asked them, he called them, Adam, Eve, where are you? So they told God, we are hiding somewhere here because we are naked. God asked them, how did you know you're naked? Then they said, it's because... You know, no, no, he asked them, why do you think, why, how did you know you're naked? Did you eat from the fruit that I, 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 did, I told you not to? And they were like, yes, God, we did it. Do you know what God did? I want you to read Genesis chapter 3. You continue to reading chapter 3 all the way and see what happened. Because God was not very happy. God was not very happy. Because I've created you, I've loved you. And I expect you to appreciate what I've created. And also, I expect you to be responsible, to be obedient. But he didn't do that. Adam and Eve did not do that. So God punished them. You're going to read further on that chapter, and then you'll know how God punished, punished them. But now, I want us to relate it to our topic of this month, appreciating God's creation. And probably I'll want to ask you, have you experienced God creation in your life? So that you can, you know, you, don't, you cannot appreciate something that you've not experienced, right? In your individual life, have you experienced God creation? Yes, have you? For example, for, for those of us who have seen a bird or chicken, an egg hatching, have you seen an egg hatching and then a beautiful chick comes out? What do you think that is? That is creation, a new chick, a new baby has come. And that is creation and then you say it's beautiful you go to a garden you plant a seed it sprouts and then it there is a stem and there are beautiful flowers then you say oh this is beautiful i love it yes you are appreciating because you've experienced it right so how do we protect this god's creation that we've been given number one if there is a garden there there is a forest there do not cut down trees Right? Because if you, you, God made everything beautiful. If you cut down trees, it means that you're not appreciating God's creation. Right? When you go and throw in litter all over, you are not appreciating God's creation. And God made the world beautiful. So we should be able to appreciate God's creation. Then we also have people who are not very good to each other. Remember, God created us on the sixth day. So when you see somebody who is mean to some, another person, know that they are not appreciating God's creation. And for us to appreciate God's creation, we have to love one another, which is the greatest commandment. So boys and girls, as we go home today, let us know that we should be able to, we are unique human, we are unique and created in God's image. And everything that God created was beautiful. We should not mess around with it. And then God designs us to live in peace with each other. The, the, that shows that we are appreciating God's creation. And disobedience leads to what? Punishment. Okay? There is an evil being who lurks around. And if we do not obey God's word and follow instructions, then we, are not, we cannot say that we are doing what? We are appreciating God's creation. 
At this point, I'm going to call our Sunday school children to do a memory verse for us as we end the service. Praise God. Praise God again. My name is Ivana. My name is Hazel. And we have a memory verse. Genesis 1:27. it says, So God created man in his own image. In the image of God, he created him. Male and female, he created them. Thank you. Thank you very much. That is beautiful, Genesis 1, that God created man in his own image, isn't it? So as you go home, know that you are a unique being. You are in God's image, right? You are unique. But also remember, God is a spirit. Are we together? So I want us to end with the word of grace. I want you to hold hands at home. Those who are at home, those who are watching from wherever the world, in the world, let us hold hands together and do the, say the word of grace. May the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with us now and forevermore. Amen. Thank you very much and God bless you.